as long as black people worship a white god, there's no, there's no coming out of the victimization that they're in. As long as black people in Africa, black people in America, black people around the world, as long as they're worshiping a white, blonde, blue-eyed man, how do they think that they're going to come out of the tyranny that they're in? If God created the black and the white and the brown and the yellow and everyone, then God would be colorless. There would be no color to God. There's only one true God. And then he sent prophets, Adam, Abraham, David, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. That's the thing that makes sense, that there's no divine, no authority, no God, but one. And that he then sent his messengers. But as long as a white man, when he's praying, he's praying in his mind to a white, a black man, as long as a black man in his mind, as long as he's praying to a white God, how do he, how does he think things will change? Even when Obama becomes president, it doesn't change the situation. When Obama becomes the president, all you learn is that how much hate there was for this president. How much people are against him? How much hate crime has increased? How much hatred in America has increased because you have a black president? So I want every black person in America because a lot of the slaves that were brought over to America, a lot of them were Muslims. At least, like if you go at the very small numbers, 30%. But the reality is more than 60% were Muslims because East Africa was already Muslim. And that was their native religion before they were brought here. And so every African American, every African, and every African Christian has to think not, you know, okay, so there are two African Christians, two, I divide them into two groups. Those that became Christian through the colonial powers and the Christianity that's existed there for a very long time, for thousands of years. Those people who became Christians because of the colonial powers, they have to really, especially they have to think, okay, why are we worshiping a white God? Why are we worshiping a white God? And if you don't answer this, and if you don't ask your priests this and your pastors this and your whoever this, that why are we worshiping a God whose image, basically an idol, is a white man, blue-eyed, blonde hair? I mean... Factually, the reconstruction of Jesus that's been done by the grave, graves that have been dug out of that time and that era in Palestine where Jesus was from, from Jerusalem, the people from that time, they were not white. They were like brown, kind of like me. Uh, I'm not Arab, but you know, similar to me, uh, because Jesus would be more like an Arab. He would be more Mediterranean. And so if... Christianity has been corrupted so much that they're actually showing the image of God, which is against the Bible, to show the image of God, to make an image of God, to make an idol. But if you make the image of God, it's been so corrupted that you're making the image of God like a white man. And if especially the majority of Christianity is like that. That's a big problem. And then, you know, the Bible says that when he, he looked at his feet and his feet were copper, this is in the Bible. Jesus' feet, the color of Jesus' feet described in the Bible is copper. And the last thing I want you to think about, and this is, you know, if you've seen Muslims pray, we put our head to the ground, right? We fall to the ground. It's a famous image all over the world. I want to tell you, 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 read about, you read about people praying in the Bible, how do they pray? They fell to the ground. Abraham fell to the ground. Adam fell to the ground. Jesus fell to the ground. Uh, David fell to the ground. Uh, all the prophets of God, they used to pray by putting their face to the ground. It's in the Bible. Look it up. Do your own research. And then you have to, you have, I mean, at least you have to ask yourself, does God really have a color? Or is God beyond images? Is God beyond colors? He made colors. Look, colors are limited. God is unlimited. A color limits itself. God is unlimited. Anyway, I want you to think about that. And, you know, maybe you come to some positive conclusion. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no divine but God.
the one true God who created everything, created the black, the white, the yellow, the pink, the everything. And he created the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, we're all his. That's how you become the human family. You believe in one God and one pair of parents. That's the only way that you can say we're one human family. Like Prophet Muhammad said, Al-Khalqu Ayalullah. The creation is the family of God. You know, and uh, just also on that point, yeah, Jesus is the son of God according to the Bible, but so is Abraham. You are my firstborn. I have begotten thee. Uh, Abraham is the son of God. We are the children of God. Uh, Adam is the son of God. It doesn't mean that he's literally the son of God. It means he's close to God. We are the children of God. So uh, do your research. Learn about Islam. Maybe Islam is a good alternative for, uh, for you, especially since your forefathers were most, most likely Muslims. Uh, and because it's the truth, there is, you know, there's nothing more tr intuitively true than the idea of la ilaha illallah. There's no divine but one God. There's no authority but one God. There's only one creator. Nothing more truer than that. You know, even when you look at the universe, you look at ev everything is self-organized, right? Like there's the sun and everything revolves around the sun. There's the atom. And then the electrons go around the nucleus cells. They have a nucleus too. Uh, the brain with the human body, everything is centralized into oneness, right? So this whole universe is centered around one God, uh, like the black holes of the galaxies. I mean, you can just go on and on, but the point is there's nothing more intuitively true that if there is a limitless God who is above time and creation, above time and space, then he cannot be an idol or an image. He has to be the one who is above image and above time and above space and above uh, anything of the creation. And so I want you to think of that and may God guide us all and grant us. And, and I also want to invite you to read the Quran. Read the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. You'll be surprised. You'll be absolutely surprised. And you'll learn that your images about Islam in the, from the media are so wrong about what you generally may have been learning about Islam in the media. So, the only way out, as long as black people worship a white god, or a god who's considered to be white in certain parts of the world, blonde, blue eyes, as long as you're stuck with someone else's God, you're stuck. That's all I got to say. The only thing that'll free you is if you say there's one limitless, colorless God who created all of us. La ilaha illallah. That's what it is. And it's a great chant because la ilaha illallah, you know, one of the things that gives you, relax, relaxes you, teaches you to relax is this L sound, right? We say la la bye, la la bye, right? La 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 is one of the first things taught when you're learning songs to sing with the la 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 because it's soothing. So la ilaha illallah is also very soothing. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye.